behind me, you can see tomato plants. Those tomato plants, I've been watching practically day and night, hovering over them as a, almost like a mother taking care of her hens, you know, her little chicks, as a hen takes care of her chicks. I've been waiting and watching for the precious fruit of the harvest. Gradually, those plants went from one inch to two inches to three inches to now. Approximately, you can't tell from this angle, but they're four feet tall. And this one right here, if you can see my finger point, has, oh, I don't know, three tomatoes. This one has right here two tomatoes. The one over there has six tomatoes. And they're little tiny ones. They're little cherry tomatoes. And I have some other plants that are growing the bigger tomatoes. But they've begun to bear fruit. Now, I'm kind of excited about that. So every day, I water them, I come out, I check them, I, I look at them, and I'm anticipating the time when I can take them, you know, and pluck them from the vine, you know, and eat them, actually, because they're sweet to the taste. They're delicious when you grow them up into the fullness of the stature of what they're meant to be. Those things that God intended for the tomato to become, you know, fully red, ripened, you know, just bursting with all this sustenance inside and this juice. Matter of fact, a tomato is a fruit and not a vegetable. Did you know that? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a fruit, not a, not a vegetable, like some people sometimes make mistakes. But God intended for that tomato plant to bear fruit. And the way it's growing, it will bear much fruit. And that's what God wants to do in your life, is that He never intended for you to be just a plant. God never planted you someplace or put you someplace unless He wanted you to bear fruit. He wants you to grow he wants you to know, he wants you to experience him, not just in a personal, intimate way, but he wants your life to become more abundant in the way that he intended it to be. Oh, it may not be wealth that you prosper in. It may not be great ministries that you grow in. But you know what? What he really wanted and desires, and he watches over you every day to look and see, is that fruit in your life that he wants to produce in you not outside of you but in you yeah you see inside of you there's like this little tiny seed you know it's called the word of god and as it begins to grow it's like it begins to take over its space kind of like these roots have been going to take over you know, this is a table that i actually elevated so that the plants would get more of the sunlight because I want them to be in the sunlight because once you're in the light, as he is in the light, not only do they have the fellowship of his spirit that causes them to grow, but they develop fully into the plant that they're supposed to be, bearing the fruit that God intended them to have and allowing me to enjoy the harvest of what I'm going to get for all these plants that I planted and watched over and waiting to see them grow. And that's what God does in your life. He wants to see you grow up. He wants to see you mature. He wants to see you bear much fruit. He wants you to experience the fullness of His love so that you would have peace. Oh, not the normal peace that most people think of, but the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that in the midst of a trial or tribulation, you know, like Boston bombings or Texas explosions or, you know, people with guns or whatever violent means there may be around you or, you know, reasons to fear or to have anxiety or to worry about finances or to, you know, be concerned about the gang down the street, you know, or the drive-by shooting, you know. We don't need fear because we have the peace of God that passes all understanding. And it may be a little tiny fruit, but it'll grow. And God wants it to grow and to develop fully into what he intended it to be. Now, this plant really can't do anything else but grow. But it does require a little bit of watering, you know, it does require a little bit of, you know, like weeding, if I had any weeds in there, but I don't. And it requires good soil, you know, and those things that will cause it to grow. And so that in your life, likewise, may be some of the things that you need to do, you know, in your life so that you would bear much fruit. You need to be concerned about those places that you are 
that you're doing. Because you see, if this plant tried to get up and take off and go somewhere that it wasn't supposed to be, you know, like try to become a watermelon, it just wouldn't work. A tomato plant, no matter how hard it tries, just isn't going to bear watermelons. It may want to bear watermelons. It may try to bear watermelons. It may even think it looks like a watermelon and tell everyone it's a watermelon. I'm sorry. The fruit on it is tomatoes. That's right. That little tomato plant. I can tell it's a tomato plant because of the fruit it has. And that's true in your life. You may want to be something more than what you are. You may think you're something more than what you are. But you know, what God intended you to be is to bear fruit. Whatever fruit that may be. You may have peace that passes all understanding. Or you may have the love of God that reaches out to people that most people wouldn't find lovable at all. And that might be the fruit that God is causing to grow in you. Or you may have joy unspeakable that you just want to dance and sing and laugh and carry on and bring that kind of exuberance and love and excitement for life and zest and zeal, you know, for the Lord into some place that is like pretty straight laced and pretty square. There you go there. And the reality of that is that in all these things, the master gardener knows what's best for you because he wants to grow you up into the fullness of who you are. You already know who you are. It's pretty obvious. You may only have a little fruit, but God is working in you to cause more fruit and to cause you to grow up into him in all things so that you would be what God intended you to be. And I have no idea what that may be. You may be a peace child, you know, of the 60s. You may be a love child of the 70s. You may be, who knows, a joy child of the 80s. But 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, we're in the last days. And it's not that much far away before the Lord returns. So we should get excited and grow up into everything that we can in the day that we can. For while it is today, while it is called today, then we should work in the light and in the day as God has given us the ability to do it His way. Because God doesn't want us to be just like stunted in growth. He wants us to grow tall, to grow full, to grow wide, to grow abundant according to what He wants us to be. He wants us to be, if you're a tomato plant, a tomato plant. And be contented therein to just bear much fruit. Or if you're a watermelon, be a watermelon. Hey, boy, just be that watermelon. <laughs> Or if you're a cantaloupe, hey, don't try to be an antelope. Just be a cantaloupe. The two joys. My children, I come. Hearts eager to do my will send out a call ever I find irresistible. I know no barrier then when someone delights to do my will and chooses to follow me with a joyful heart. Resignation to do my will keeps me barred out from more hearts than does unbelief. Uh, you know that serving the Lord, just real bummer, man. You know, it's just not quite what I thought it would be. You know, I don't know if I want to be a Christian. Can anything be such a crime against love as being resigned? My will should be welcomed with a glad wonder if I am to do my work in the heart and the life of the people who are calling upon my name. In all true discipleship and in the true spiritual development of each disciple, there is first the wonder and the joy of first acquaintance. Ooh, wow, look, it's the Lord. Ooh, cool. Then comes the long, plain stretch of lesson learning and discipline. Oh, man, you mean I'm going to stay married to her, to him, for a lifetime? Forever? Ugh. But the constant experience of me, the constant, persistent recognition of my work in daily happenings, the numberless instances in which seeming chance or wonderful coincidence can be, must be traced back to my loving forethought. All these gradually engender a feeling of wonder, certainty, gratitude, and followed by time of joy. Lord, I didn't know that this was the one you chose for me. I thought I picked her. I thought I picked him. I thought we picked this church. I thought we picked this city. And yet, God, you seem to have picked it for us and made all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. And God, I thank you that you've done that for me. Because, God, I never would have imagined that you could have prepared all these things for my benefit when I thought they were to my detriment. Joy is of two kinds. The joy born of love and wonder 
and the joy born of love and knowledge. And in between the experience of the two joys lie discipline, disappointment, and almost disillusionment. But combat these in my strength, persevere in obeying my will, accept my discipline, and the second joy will follow. And of the second joy it was said that, Your joy no man taketh from you. Do not regret the first, but the second is the greater gift. I know for myself that people think that, man, that guy's just like a nut. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Because I enjoy the opportunities that I can express my joy in a way that manifests itself to the reflection of what I see God doing in the abstract of what he's doing in my life, in my heart, in my soul, because the abstract is what attracted me to Jesus in the first place. I, if he was just a simple man, I would have followed him and you know, kind of went, well, yeah, okay, you're a man, you know, up to a point, and then I would have walked away because I would have been bored. But you see, there's something greater about God in the flesh than what I even imagined to be, and he constantly does that to me, bringing those unusual ways and circumstances that he can cause to work to the good for me and that he can turn my life around and make it look like what was a frown a smile because he turns it upside down imagine that God able to take something that was meant for evil and make it to good and I keep looking at that and blowing my mind it's like wow Lord when I thought I had to do battle it wasn't something that was to be battled against but it was something to give to you that you could turn it upside down and make it work for good. Man, people don't even realize, nine times out of ten, I already won the battle before it even started because I just turned it over to the Lord. And He was able to use it for His glory. He was able to take some rotten soil and just add a little bit of, you know, like fertilizer and bam, it became something good. And I thought it stunk. Turned out it worked out for good and it was used for the glory of God to grow up a tomato plant. Huh, imagine that. Something that stinketh, worketh for God's good. That's kind of like your life. Sometimes there's things in your life that stink, but they were meant to work in you, to cause you to come to Him, to give to Him your life, so that He could turn it around like fertilizer and use it for something good in your ground of your life's experiences that he would make it into that which he was able to make profitable for himself through the growing process of your life that you would grow up out of that thing that stinketh and becomes opening up of a blossom and a bloom that gradually turns into long branches that as you are bearing fruit and you stay in the vine and the vine is the branches Jesus said I am the vine you are the branches that gradually your branches would reach out even farther and expand farther out and you would bear much fruit that you would be even a shade to those that are growing up underneath you that other people too would likewise be protected from the heat of the day from the rain from the wind and that you would actually be almost like a mother hen protecting its chicks kind of like what God did to you so allow the Holy Spirit in your life to work through your life to cause you to use your life no matter what circumstances you think are so bad <laughs> God will take that and cause joy to grow up in them because he'll show you how he can take any life and turn it upside down and work it out for eternal life and an abundant life now as well as an eternity with him forever and ever 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 never ending life boy talk about a never ending story man that's what God is all about he is a never ending story